<laughs> Hello my loves and here we have my little boho houseboat and um, it's a really nice substantial weighty thing. It looks lovely standing up and I think I'm going to keep mine out as a display piece. Uh, it's got a magnet closure. I've used one magnet, you can use two. And it opens up to reveal these two pockets here. And if we have a look at this one first, uh, we've got this little folio, a really pretty little folio. On one side, we've got a stitch bound little notebook that's attached, that's glued on. And on this side, we've got a little pocket and we've got this zigzag accordion folded, quite substantial writing space in there. That goes there like that. And it lives in its little pocket right there. On this side, we've got a teapot. And in the teapot, we've got two little pocketses. We've got writing space on the actual inside of the teapot itself. We've got two little tags with writing spaces in these little heart shapes because our teapot is full of love. And we've got these two teapot two tea bags with these little dangles and the tea bags open to reveal these little writing spaces and we've got two of those and they actually fit inside these cups now these cups are flat uh, they fold flat and you can move this handle around to open it squeeze this open there's a base then that you can then push down it looks like that and you can make these 3D little cups. <laughs> They're really cute. Now this one has been designed so you can open it up. If you printed that with the pale paper backing sheet, you've got a little writing space there, which is quite cute and fun because you'll just see your writing when you put this cup back together like that. This one has been designed slightly differently. You can do you can do both designs with these two sheets. There, there are options for both with each. Uh, and you've got this little pink cup and that just opens like that. Uh, so they're your little teacups to go with your teapot. And you can open up this even further and you've got this big old writing space here and you've got two pockets uh, that you can fill with your own bits and pieces of ephemera. And this matches my boho heart no boho dreams i've got two that are quite similar boho heart and boho dreams if you've got either of those two kits uh, you will have all sorts of bits and pieces of ephemera of ephemera that match this that you can add in now here's the beautiful special little trick uh, the little secret of this boho houseboat when we open this side here we reveal let's get this in better light for you we we reveal this 3d scene uh, of the interior of this houseboat. Now I absolutely love this, it's right up my street and I will live there in a flash. We've got this 3D sofa, the 3D table and the 3D chest of drawers with all the details going on on the wall behind and a lovely big rug on the floor there. And the same on the other side, if we open up the other side we get the 3D kitchen area of this boho houseboat. We've got the 3D cooker, the pop-up cooker, the pop-up chair and we've got this pop-up sink as well and with all the pots and pans and bits and bobs and we've even got a little dog asleep in his basket down by the fire, down by the cooker there so that's it that is the boho houseboat i'm really really pleased with this make if you'd like to see how to put it together carry on watching the video come along with me and enjoy this <laughs> enjoy this ride here we go then We've got uh, this page printed out. This is obviously the outside of the little boho boathouse. Um, and then we've got these two sheets here that are the inside of the boathouse. Then we've got this page here, which is a couple of tags and the actual closure for the boathouse. And then you will need two of this sheet. Uh, with this base on it and this long pocket. I have reverse printed all of these with the pale paper backing sheet. Um, and also to note, if you are on A4 paper, you'll find that you've only got a tiny, tiny little flap there. Ignore where your border has gone and just cut out right to the very edge there to give yourself a bit more of a flap. OK, I'm going to begin, I think, by cutting out these main 
three, this four, these four pieces as well because I've got the lid on. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave those pieces to one side for now. I'm going to go ahead and cut those pieces out. Oh, I'm on 250 gram. Did I say that? Uh, there are going to be quite a few layers in this construction. So you'd be OK with 200 gram. I would suggest that 160 is going to be a little bit papery for you, uh, but that's totally up to you. OK, I'll crack on. So here are the bits cut out that I want to concern myself with at the moment. Uh, I've got my closure. Um, so I'm going to start by creasing, uh, scoring rather, where the, the beige area meets the black area. And then on this section here, you've got just a faint white line, just a, a couple of millimetres or a millimetre into that black space there. So you can crease that, or score that rather, and then you can fold this and make yourself a nice sharp fold. And there is your closure. You've got the top <laughs> of the little boho houseboat, which looks really cute. And then you've got the front there. Uh, this section here, you are going to... Oh, heck, will this even fit in my thingy, with my scoring board? Yes, it will. Um, there's the grey base, the gusset of this structure that meets the actual sides of the little boho houseboat. So score along those two areas there and then fold those up and put those to one side as well. Now we get on to the detailed stuff. Uh, and this is the inside, the two pop-up elements uh, of the inside of the houseboat. Um, now then, where shall we start? Let's start with the sofa. I think this one's going to be a little bit simpler, so it's a better introduction for us. With a nice sharp craft knife. Now I'm going to be using both the front and the back of the craft knife. I'm using the front of the craft knife to cut. I'm using the back of the craft knife to score. Uh, right, I'm going to begin by... Um, cutting this sofa arm shape all the way down to the floor and obviously I can't use a ruler for this because it's a wavy shape so make sure you've got a nice sharp blade and you'll go through in one nice easy cut okay and I'm going to do the same on am I going all the way down yes I'm going all the way down I can never remember myself uh, there we go all the way down, follow this shape down. All the way down to the floor. And the same on this other side. I'm going to turn it upside down for this. And around this curve. Ever so cute what's going on in this uh, living space of this little boho houseboat. I love it. This has been one of the slowest kits for me to put together. I can't begin to tell you. Um, but it's come together now. I'm really, really pleased with it. So that's that. I think that's all the cutting that you need to do there. Now we've got some scoring to do on this shape. And we are scoring, you will see, uh, a very faint line going across these cushions here. And you need to score. So I'm using the back of my craft knife now along that shape. I haven't got a ruler to hand, which is annoying. Maybe I'll use this piece of card as a as a guide. I usually like to do everything freehand, but I've got quite a steady hand. Uh, so you use a ruler by all means. Let's just line that up. Um, back of the ruler, uh, back of the craft knife rather, I'm scoring across that shape there. Right, where else am I scoring, folks? <laughs> uh, I'm scoring the bottom of this entire shape, actually of this whole sofa shape. So I can score back of the craft knife right the way across there. Didn't go right the way across. There we go. Uh, where else am I scoring? I've scored there. I'm scoring across the top of these arms there. I'm also scoring uh, the area in between these shapes. So I've got one here. I've got one in between this table and the sofa. I've got one in between the table and the drawers here. And then I've got one that goes right up to the very, very end like that. So they're done. 
Uh, let's have a look at this sofa, shall we? OK, and we're also going to score at the top of this little red band here where the red meets the blue. And the more accurate we can be about this, the easier this whole thing is to fold in the end. OK, I think that's us done on that one. Let's move on to the table. Now, the table and this little chest and this little chest of drawers here uh, both need scoring. Oh, one's a bit lower than the other. <laughs> so back of the craft knife for me here. And I'm just going to score along the bottom of that table. And I'm also going to score along the bottom of this chest of drawers. I'm going to score all the way across the top of the table. And the top of the chest of drawers. And I'm going to score where this blue meets the black here. Oh, which bit am I doing? Let's measure that off. Let me just check. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. OK, I'm uh, scoring across the top of the blue, where the blue meets the black. I knew that. <laughs> I hadn't forgotten. There, so that's that. I think that's all our scoring done there. Uh, we're scoring. Have we scored across the top of this table? I think we have, have we? I think we have. Score across the top of your table if you haven't done that already. Uh, and I've also got... Uh, a score to make round about here somewhere and I think that is going to be, let me just measure that off so I can be sure where I'm going. Okay, uh, you're going to score along the top of this paler line here. And if, you keep, if you're using the back of your craft knife to score, keep it nice and flat. Uh, saves it dragging. Right, so I think that's my scores done, and now we can cut. And I'm going to cut this table, these two lines on the top and the legs. I like this. And then I'm just going to turn this around and I'm going to do this little bit of the table here. And hopefully we've gone through. Yes, we have. And the chest of drawers, same kind of deal. Down from the top. And I'm going to come all the way down this drawer to the floor. So I'm going to line that up with me a little bit of paper. Oh, I'm cutting here, aren't I? <laughs> And cut and then just turn that round and do that little twiddly bit there that's gone through and then I'm also going to do this little twiddly bit here and I'm going to cut all the way down here I'm going for it freehand with this one there. okay so now we're going to begin <laughs> the fiddly challenge of folding this up and it is a bit of a fiddle and you'll think oh gosh it's not happening it's not happening but it will happen for you so it's helpful to note that you've got two planes going on you've got the top which will be um, the table top the top of this chest of drawers here and the top of the seat of the sofa and also the tops of the arms of the sofa will be on that plane here Going straight down will be the actual body of this chest of drawers, this section of the table, this section of the sofa and this section of the arms. So you can logic will dictate which way round these, these folds need to go. The ones at the bottom, obviously, you need to be reinforcing those to make the floor and the walls. And you're trying to do this without making any unnecessary folds anywhere else. So, for instance, with this table here, uh, gently tease this tabletop 
into its position at 90 degrees to the floor, sorry, parallel with the floor and fold this wall section back up. So you've got this half a box shape here. You've got this 90 degree shape. This shape pushes out. <laughs> it's difficult as well to show you on the camera. Uh, this shape you need to be encouraging to go that way. Uh, the sofa, let's look at the sofa. The sofa arms come out. This long section here is this plane. So it's sitting at 90 degrees to the floor. So you want to encourage that to happen. And then the tops of the arms of the sofa are parallel with the floor. This section here, the seat, you need to fold so that it's parallel with the floor. The other arm, You've got the big section that's at 90 degrees to the floor and then you're pushing that up like that. And when you've started to tease all of those pieces into place and they're starting to look uh, like they should, you can begin to very gently fold this whole thing down. Very gently, a bit at a time. For instance, you can get this sofa looking something like and that looks like it's working quite well and you can see from mine here where these pieces lie on the outside and you can when you get them you can reinforce those creases you've got this floor section here reinforce that reinforce that and reinforce that now this one is extra tricky to some of my pop-ups because you're dealing with this whole long length all in one go but you see it's starting to go if i push that up and push them down you may find that some of your um, creases are slightly off when you start to collapse it like this go with the collapsed shape because that's how it needs to sit ultimately and there we are. I've done mine. It's all folded down. It's all collapsed as it should. And when I open it up, I've got this 3D shape now with things sitting just exactly as they need to sit. So there we are. That's that one done. Let's do the other one. Right. So now we're going to move on to the kitchen side of the little boho houseboat now i've already done mine because i had a few problems <laughs> with my with my video um so we are going to be cutting it's blowing a gale out there sorry about that background noise uh, we're going to be cutting from this back section here all the way down to the bottom of the sink unit the same on the other side so you're cutting that turning over your craft knife or whatever other tool you're using and you're going to draw a straight line a score right the way across the bottom of the sink unit and then you are going to score where's mine the bottom section where this uh, burgundy color meets the green and you're going to score right the way across there again where the the greeny blue meets the burgundy and then you are going to score where the pink meets the burgundy so just along the top where the, where this white piece meets the burgundy here you, that's the line that you're following straight across there so that's that piece the chair you're cutting from where the seat of the chair meets the back of the chair so cut a line down there. You can go straight down if you want, or you can follow this little twiddly shape. I've done a little bit of both because <laughs> I couldn't decide. So straight down here as well. You're making a cut. You're creasing or scoring with the back of your knife or the tool along the bottom of this chair. And you're also scoring uh, where this dark blue meets the actual top of the seat so at the top of that dark blue line there and you're scoring where the seat the blue meets the green of the back of the chair so that's that one now this one <laughs> i messed up with mine but you'll do yours right you are going to score where this flat top of the cooker meets the back so the top of that dark edge there and then you're going to be scoring and i'm going to double check this before i 
tell you exactly where you need to be going. Okay, you're going to be scoring the bottom of this reddish colour just here where it starts to meet the shadow. And this section here, now this is where I went wrong, I went right from the bottom of the feet. Don't go right from the bottom of the feet. You'll see that there's a slightly darker section there. Go where the darker section meets the lighter section. So draw yourself a straight score across here like that. Now I've done mine slightly wrong, so good luck to me folding this up. Uh, so now we're ready to fold, I do believe. And again, um, you can use logic to determine like which pieces are going to be uh, on this plane here and which pieces are going to be coming straight down. So for instance, you want to start to fold up the bottom of this sink unit Put your finger behind and your nail or a tool if you want to in front and make that line come upwards. Obviously your floor, sorry I haven't turned my notifications off, um, your floor needs to fold to nine, at 90 degrees to the wall so you can make those, start to make those little folds happen nice and gently. You're in no rush, you go slowly. You won't do anything you'll regret. Uh, and the same here with this cooker. Obviously mine's a little bit different to yours because I did mine wrong. But there we go. Uh, and when you've got all these kind of starting to work, you can begin to form these other folds. And again, you're working nice and slowly because you don't want to make any folds happen where you don't want the folds because they'll come back and bite you. <laughs> so here's the chair top that needs to come down and then uh, 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 up again. <laughs> the front of the cooker needs to come out. The top needs to fold down and then this back needs to come back up again. And when it's looking like those folds are starting to behave themselves, you can begin to fold this thing down nice and gently. Start with some of the creases that you feel more confident about, like these ones at the bottom here. Push those in. Have a look at where your wall parts are and kind of push these out a little bit and the thing will start to collapse. There we go, and just encourage it into place. Beautiful, now mine's worked even though I did it wrong. <laughs> and then you can reinforce those creases now with a folding bone if you've got one handy. And again, if your creases, if your score lines are just ever so slightly off, go with what's happening when it starts to collapse and make those slight adjustments if you need to here. And when we pop this up, we've got our 3D little pop-up space there. So that's done. We've done both of those. Now let's move on to the next bit. It's round about now <laughs> that you will need these pages. You've printed out two of these, reverse printed them with the pale paper backing. Uh, so cut those out um, and you're going to score along this line here, along here, and then this folds up to form a pocket there and this fold, folds down over the top. Now the pocket itself, uh, as I mentioned before, if you're printing on US sized paper, you'll be able to print right to the edge. If you're printing on A4 paper, uh, printing at 100%, which is what you need to be doing, then you will find that you have a little bit of um, cut off there. That's absolutely fine. Just allow, um, don't cut this piece of white paper off, uh, right, right to the end so that you've got that little bit of extra to play with and then form that up into the usual gusseted pocket shape. So you've got this little sort of box form going on here. So I'll do that with this other one as well. So here are my pieces cut out. Uh, I've made myself a little thumb hole uh, roughly in the centre uh, and I've made my crease lines and I folded. And I'm now going to fold this up 
to make my pocket and that can just sit there for a little while I'll put some weight on it so that sticks down and the same with this one just create my pocket <laughs> come on glue do your thing let's get some bulldog clips on you there we are and then go and sit to one side for a minute while we glue some other bits and bobs on let's have a look pockets can go over there right now then let's have a look at our actual main body <laughs> of this little houseboat hello little houseboat i do like it so much uh, we've got a um a closure to go on the front here so we need to where's my glue gone <laughs> So I'm going to glue this flap here, doesn't matter which side you stick it on. I'm going to let that go tacky and then I'm going to glue it into place. Now that's had a moment or two. Now I'm going to glue this down and this is going to glue over here no it does matter which way around this goes on actually it absolutely does you want to make sure um, that when it's all closed up that this flower matches up with this flower so you can place that where it needs to go um, and then you'll know that this needs to go on the back of the other piece so let's do that that was a major disaster narrowly averted there by me so we're going to stick that on so that these black areas meet up i've got a slight crease there that's fine a slight little bit of pale absolutely fine with that that allows for the actual fold so now when we come to shut this structure up we've got huh, the lid the lid the roof of our boat which i love that i love that and then this comes down over here forms this kind of invisible closure and then you've got that that's the back now so that's done and stuck on now it does matter which way around these two pieces go because the shapes are different you've got this little uh, nub at the end here so this needs to go there that won't fit there that's for the other side so we can begin by now gluing this on and we want to make sure that um, we can fold this up properly so we want to just be lining this bottom edge up with this crease this fold and making sure that we can close it properly mine's lining up beautifully so i'm going to go ahead and glue that down and i have to glue that down by putting glue on this bit not on this bit because we've got these little tiny bits here that we need to be sure uh, we don't glue over onto these parts because then the whole thing would stick together and it wouldn't pop up so go in with some um, with a nice seam of glue around those edges like this and then when you're happy you've got that going on you can glue the rest and i would suggest that you don't go too close to those edges even give yourself a little bit of a margin because you don't want splodging out onto there and if you do have any little bits that you need to go in and just apply a little bit more glue to you can go in afterwards if you've got a needle tip bottle like this and just inject a tiny tiny little bit of glue into it i really should turn my notifications off there we go i'm going to let that go tacky oh and i'm also going to just lose some of that bulk of glue from there so that i don't get any nasty surprises and nasty splodges there i'll leave that for a minute okay i think we're good to go with this one where are we now we're here aren't we so i'm sticking this piece now down over the top uh, hopefully i'm lining these pieces up beautifully but i am paying more attention to this bottom because it's very important that we're able to fold this up and i'd rather go slightly above this line here and then if I've got anything that needs dealing with on the outside, I think I'd like to trim that off later. Uh, and also you need to pay attention 
obviously to this fold here and make sure that you can fold this down as well. But that's working beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. I can give that a good, good old squidge down now. And then when I come to open, I've got my beautiful 3D little boho boathouse interior. Lovely. Same on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do this gluing business again over the over here, over these little tiny edges, being careful not to go too close to the edge because you don't want to splodge over. So a little bit of a seam, giving yourself a little bit of a margin. And then if you want to, you can go in and just blend that out a little bit so you haven't got too much glue. You've got a nice coverage, but it's not going to splodge out. And then you can fill in all the rest. And you can give that a minute to go tacky. I'm going straight in with this one. I'm quite excited about it now. <laughs> so glue this one on again, paying attention. Whoops, the daisy went well off there. Paying attention to this bottom um, fold here. I'm lining up those edges. Let's have a look. I've got a little bit of trimming down to do. That's absolutely fine. Don't mind that at all. That's grand. And just check that everything folds up as it should. How good is that looking? We're getting there. We're getting there, folks. Um, right, so let's have a look at that as well. Uh, that's our living room. <laughs> that's what that looks like. Sorry. And this is our kitchen. That's what that looks on that side. If you wanted to, you could cut that sink out, I guess. I haven't done. Uh, right, okay. So we've got our 3D opening uh, shapes here. And we want to attach more, <laughs> more, more, more. So we've got these pieces. The pockets are formed. Uh, I want to glue these so that my pockets open outwards. So I've got my form opened like this. I'm popping this on here and then I'm opening this outwards like that. And I've also got these pockets to stick on here. So I think I will glue this down first. I've got these fiddly little bits like we've just dealt with here that I don't want to get glue over spilling and splodging out onto bits that have got no business sticking. But once I've got those I can just go for it with my glue. Uh, right, so I'm going to glue this piece onto here now, aren't I? So lining up to the best of my ability. And squidging that on. Check it from the other side. That looks grand. Oh my goodness, it looks great. Uh, this, uh, this design, like I say, this, uh, this particular project has been a real challenge for me. Uh, right, so I'm opening outwards, so just make sure you open outwards. You can have a look at doing it the other way around, so you open inwards if you like. Um, I'm going outwards because I like the, you know, to make it look bigger as you open it. Uh, it looks more substantial. Uh, and also, I think I may have some logistical issues with my pockets if I do it inwards. But have a play by all means, have a play. There we are. So that's that on, that's that on. Let's just check that everything closes up nicely. Look at that. There's a lot going on in there now. That's great. My pockets are now going to stick on here. I could have popped some glue on here for that to be going tacky already, but I haven't. So I've got some glue on the pockets and I formed them into this box shape with these gussets at the side and at the bottom. And I am going to glue this in place right here, right now. <laughs> getting glue on my fingers also and sliding that about all over the place come on and I get your act together I've got a little tool here that I can use to just press those little tabs down the little gluey tabs down inside to make sure they're adhered nicely that's it completely forgotten to ink that edge which I wanted to do could probably do it in a minute or two 
easy to do it beforehand and again I've got my tool to stick this pocket down good 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 and this will now all fold up <laughs> come on do fit it fit it will fit it will fit it was designed to fit uh, my glue's a bit wet I'm in a bit ginger with it there we go only just look at that it's very tight in there now but that's okay we haven't got too much to go in those pockets and that will all still close really nicely and it's starting to feel quite nice and substantial now you can see from the side maybe uh, that these two pockets are butted right up against each other but we're not overfilling those pockets like we do with a lot of these projects because a lot of the work has obviously gone into the beauty of these two pieces and then we can open that up we've got our pockets there to put a few things in and we can open up this here we've got a big old writing space and we've got a little pocket um, that isn't gusseted so it won't take that much but it will take a few bits there's a few bits here for you um, but I haven't uh, designed the kit to fill all of this you can you can go ahead and you can fill this with whatever bits and pieces uh, you need so that's how that works like that right let's move on to the teacups and the teapot so the next two pages are these two pages here and I have reverse printed this uh, cup page with this backing here you can choose whichever one you want and this page I've reversed with the pale backing um, because I want some writing spaces on these tea bags etc I'll cut those out here are my cup pieces cut out uh, now there are two ways that you can stick these together I'm going to do one of each uh, to show you this one first of all we'll start with um, I've creased and scored and folded uh, all of these lines here and these pieces here and I am now going to tuck this bottom section up inside and I'm going to um, <laughs> let's have a think how I'm going to do this I'm going to tuck these sections up inside like that with those tabs underneath uh, and then I'm going to fold this tab around bring this piece over I can put it on the desk to do that get these little pieces out of the way and fold it in half so that we <laughs> I forgot I've got glue on there there we go um, so when I um, come to store this in the little pocket it will sit nice and flat now I'm going to give that uh, a moment or two to dry properly before I go showing you how it flips up into a cup this one I'm going to handle slightly differently um, because if you want to print this with the pale backing sheet so you've got writing space there you can fold your cups together um, and unfold them so you can reveal the writing space so for this one I've got my tab on this end if I turn it over I'm going to stick these little pieces that you get uh, on the page on this end piece here so I've got this edge open and I've trimmed it down just ever so slightly so that I haven't got any overlap and just make sure that that folds around nicely without any overlap there if you've got any you can go in with a pair of scissors this is such a tiny little whisker I can't even do it <laughs> there we go that'll do fine and then this one again all folds round on these score marks that you've made to form this tube here like that that will sit nicely when it's got the base in place and your base folds upwards you want that to fold inside the cup and you want these little tabs to fold inwards like that and when your cup is flat and stored it's nice and flat like that now we've got the handles haven't we to contend with um, does it matter where we put the handles I don't think it does I'm not going to put it on one of these center patterns I'll put it on an edge uh, so the two pieces of handle <laughs> go back to back like that glue those together don't glue the tabs together fold the tabs out like that so I've already glued this one together a little bit of glue on these tabs a 
and there is a right way and a wrong way. Doesn't make a great deal of difference, but that way you'll see which way up. So make sure that you've got your bottom at the bottom and you've got your handle the right way round. And then you can just go ahead and stick that bad boy down on there like that. There we are. Inky your edges if you want. I haven't done a uh, bit of an oversight because I did intend to, but I can do it afterwards. So there we go. That's your handle on. I'm going to let that dry. That actually looks really cute. Uh, this one here, um, let's glue this handle together. So glue on the actual main body of the handle. Stick these pieces together. And same again, you can pop your handle on. I don't think it matters. Like I say, it doesn't matter uh, where you stick your handle. I wouldn't go sticking it on the middle because that's where the nice little bit of pattern is centralised. Other than that, you're good to go. A little bit of glue on there. Squish this down. Is there going to be a problem with me putting the handle on there? No, but I'll put it on this side anyway, just in case I'm, I'm missing something. don't think I am. Stick your handle on. And when your handle is dry, uh, that will, <laughs> when it's dry, not when it's still wet, Emma, but that will flatten down. Okay, going to give that glue a little while to dry and we'll come back and put these things together in their 3D form. So the glue on my cups is dry and I can put these together now. They're folded flat when they're in your uh, little pockets. Um, and you can lift up that handle there, open up this shape. And as you open it up, you're pushing down this section inside. And there we go. There you've got your, <laughs> your lovely cup all shaped. I'll push that down and make that a bit of a better shape. There we go. And there you've got your, your 3D cup. This one that we've left with a little pocket on this side um, and you would print this with the, the pale backing sheet if you wanted uh, that writing space. We're tucking this shape up inside and we've made this pocket so to put it together you can pop this tab inside this pocket. Uh, now you may, you're going to need to watch that you don't put glue really right on that very edge. I have done and I've still got this little bit of white. I'll ink over that. Uh, and that won't be a problem, but just watch that you don't put any glue right up at that very, very edge. And then this glues together in the same way. You just push that bottom down to give you your base like that. Pull out your handle to 90 degrees and there are your teacups. Fabulous, lovely. They work really, really well. Uh, and let's move on to the teapot. Now the teapot I've cut out. There's a little gusset here, only a small gusset. And there are these two pockets which I've popped glue on over here. I've reverse printed this with the pale sheet because I wanted the writing space, but you can go with the pattern if you want. So we've got these two pockets with the little tabs on. So you're just going to stick those in place. One there, just slightly above that gusset line. And one here. Come on, get on. There we go. I think that'll do it. Fab. Uh, you've got these two little hearts. These are just little little tags, little writing spaces that will fit in here. Like this. And then you've got your tea bags. Now you've got two tea bags uh, with the writing space on. I need to locate my stapler for this. Uh, right, here we go then. Tea bags. Uh, I'm going to make a little hole at the centre of this section here which I'm using my ball of string as a as a soft base. <laughs> so there's my little hole there. Same on the other one. And that'll do. And I've got these two pieces of, uh, well, for me, it's embroidery thread because that's what I've got. But use what you have. I'm going to pop that through that hole there. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a knot in. I'll tie a little, just a loose knot, so the glue's got something to hold on to. There we go. I'm going to bring that up like that. I'm gonna pop a little bit of glue in there. All over just the top of that area, 
I need to keep keep this open at the bottom so don't go gluing all of that and this section here uh, is designed to tuck underneath there that's why we need to keep that a little bit open and when we've got that there like that <laughs> we can pop a staple in I'm going to do it this way around so it looks like it's at the front and I'm going about um, you can see this shape here I'm going about halfway down that shape There, that'll do fine like a tea bag <laughs> and then this little piece tucks up inside uh, you may find you have a little bit of that edge sticking out you can just trim that off and there you've got your tea bag with your writing space in there and that tucks over there this little heart here is your little uh, other end <laughs> your little dingle dangle on the end of your tea bag your tea bag will fit in there. This fits over the end. So you don't want this too long. Um, yeah, I don't know how long really. I'm just going to pop some glue. I think what I'll do is I'll glue all of this. And I'll pop a little bit of glue on this side as well because I've got a piece of string, a piece of twine. I want to really make sure it's nicely embedded in there choose my length I'm not going to be too fussy about it pop this closed and I'll let that glue dry and trim off that little bottom piece and I'll do exactly the same with the other one there we are tea bags and they can now fold away inside their little places. Ah, oh, so cute. Like that. Uh, let's fold these cups up. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Fold down the handle and fold this one up and fold down the handle. In inwards makes sense, I guess. And all of this is to go in one of these pockets. Like I said, I'm not overfilling these pockets because we haven't got much room. We've got no bulge room there to speak of. Will they go in that way? Yes, they absolutely will. So that's that one. And we are on to our last little piece of this little boho houseboat. It's so cute. I love how that's come together. Right, let's get on. And the final project in our little boho houseboat is this folio um, and so this this page I've printed on 250 gram I've reverse printed it with this sheet choose a different backing sheet if you want to uh, these sheets I've printed on 120 gram paper um, so there's this sheet here with the pale paper backing and then I've printed out two of this sheet also with the pale paper backing so those three are on 120 gram I'm going to cut them out here are my pieces cut out. Uh, you'll notice on this piece here I've left this white edge and that's because I'm going to be sticking this piece to it. Um, when you do that, <laughs> turn it over, you may find that you've got a little white border on that side so you can cut that off. I like that. Pop a little bit of glue down this white edge here. And we're going to accordion fold these pieces together eventually. But for now, we'll just pop them together and that glue can be drying. Don't worry if your pages aren't quite the right the same size. If you've uh, trimmed them down incorrectly, you can always trim down a little bit if you need to afterwards. Right, I'll leave that to dry and we'll have a look at this folio cover. Uh, I'm going to crease... I'll score these little flaps here and then I've got some very obvious lines to follow here I've got a spine down the edge uh, I've got a spine down the middle rather there's some fine white lines for you to follow there may not come across on the video and then you've got another spine here again with the fine white lines that you should be able to see no problem in real life even if you can't see them now <laughs> I'm 
so that's that and we can then go ahead and fold this up so obviously we've got our pocket here which we can fold up and we can glue that down with a bit of glue on these flaps here I'm gonna let that go tacky for a moment obviously so there's my little pockets and I'm gonna fold up my little spine and the closure for the front and I've also got this to do as well without interfering with me glue there <laughs> there we go so this is then going to fold up like this we've got a nice little pocket there <laughs> when it folds go on there's my bulldog clips I've got some somewhere I'll pop those on there because that's a a fair thickness and I haven't let my glue go tacky properly. Flatten that out nicely. There we are and then when it's done this will fold around like that. Really pretty, really nice. Now we've got some options here. I've got my little pile of pages here uh, and I've also got this little folding out section and my plan uh, was to zigzag fold this page here I might have this page as the front it's quite pretty and I can follow the lines where the lace ends to know where I'm going with that uh, and then I fold it over again I've got a line I can match up with here come back on myself and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I've got this natural line there where I've glued the two pieces together. So that's that one. And then my final fold is going to be this one here. And this can then just simply pop in to my little pocket here as being a nice big writing space when you open that up. Very simple and straightforward and you've got lots and lots of writing space there and you can do a couple of those if you want. You've got room in there <laughs> when I take my bulldog clips off uh, for a couple of those. And this one I'm going to have as a little notebook glued to this inside. Now I've just printed out uh, four of these. You can go a bit heavier if you want to, that wouldn't be a problem. And I always like to, when I'm doing something like this, fold everything together they make for a much nicer fold than folding things individually. So you can fold that up. I'm going to stitch bind this quite simply. I'm not going to overthink it or even measure anything else. I've got my ball of string here because it's a nice um, soft surface for me to make holes into. Pop a couple of bulldog clips on so that doesn't move about. And then I'm just going to make a couple of holes. And what I tend to do is I'll start and I'll make one hole. I could do with another hole punch really. Uh, the other hole maker. Uh, make one hole at the top, make another hole at about a similar sort of distance from the edge on the other side. Uh, I'll make one hole in the middle like that and then I'll make another hole <laughs> in between. I could do with being on the um, on the middle of an old book really to do this so I wouldn't be getting the uh, the little crease marks that I'm getting but I'm getting a bit gung-ho about it at this point because I've been doing this project all day and I'm ready to uh, I'm ready to wrap it up so we can begin either from the inside or the outside it doesn't really matter and we're just going to uh, make some straight stitches whoops straight stitches right the way through I'm holding on to this little tail here at the end so I'm just going to go up and down making big stitches. There we go. And then when I come to the end, I'm going to come back up through that second hole. Oops, <laughs> I'm wrapping it around my bulldog clip apparently. Uh, and then, yeah, so I'm just going back on myself and it's going the other way. It only takes a couple of minutes, it really does add, if you're not used to stitching, uh, it's really not at all intimidating and very simple. And so when you get to there, uh, you can cut your needle off the end. Come on. 
I hope I did all that on camera. I may not have done. <laughs> uh, if if I missed that on camera, I do apologise. Uh, you're just making a straight running stitch and then coming back on yourself until your two pieces join again at the end. And then you can tie a knot. Very, very simple running stitch. My knot could have been a bit tighter than that, but there we go. And then you can cut off your last little bits and you've now got a stitch bound notebook and I plan to glue that last page down in there if you want to make a little pocket of that you can do so you've got a secret little pocket in there I'm going to glue mine straight down and like I say if you want to use a couple more pages I printed out two pages for this uh, you could easily go another page and add more pages to your notebook. And you've also got some room uh, in amongst uh, this whole little project for some extra bits of ephemera if you want to. Uh, so this I am going to glue down <laughs> without smudging or smearing straight onto there like that and that is my little notebook complete obviously that glue needs to dry these can come off now and that's what this looks like when it's all folded now i haven't put a closure here i'm not going to because it will stay um, nicely as intended in its little look at that oh they match and they look so good they look so good. We're actually finished. The project is finished apart from apart from the closure. Uh, so that's what that looks like. We've got our little notebook that's glued with its decorative pages and its plain pages. I won't force that too much because the glue is still wet. And then in this little pocket, we've got this little removable accordion folded sheet. And uh, you've got room for a couple in there or a couple of different things, whatever you choose. As your little additions. Uh, this incidentally matches my um, Boho Heart junk journal kit. Boho Heart? Boho Dreams? It matches my Boho Dreams junk journal kit. Uh, so if you've got that, there's all sorts of elements and bits and bobs uh, in there that you could utilise as well. And we are done. I am, gosh, it's full. It's full. I always do this. Now I would suggest to you that you may want to think about having two magnets here, one either side. Uh, I'm going to be stingy and I'm going to use one. My camera is playing me up something terrible today. Uh, I think I lost you there again. Um, I placed my magnet and I've made that happen like that. And it's sticking with one, in fairness, it is working. But two would be nice, one either end, because it's such a long structure. And there it is. There is our little boho houseboat complete. Let's have a look. Uh, it stands up beautifully. When we open it up, we reveal it falls open to this space here. These are kept nicely uh, in place with the weight of what's inside them. Let's have a look. We've got this beautiful little folio, which is really nice, actually. That's worked out really well. On one side, we've got a little notebook. On the other side, we've got this long accordion folded uh, writing space with room for another if we wanted to. And that fits in this pocket here fits really beautifully and keeps itself nice and closed this side we've got our beautiful um, little cups this is the one uh, that I've made that comes apart like this so that you can uh, print that with the pale back pale backing sheet and have uh, a writing space if you want to and that fits together like that and opens like that so that's one little cup and we've got the other one that's joined together that's just a little whimsy little cup and it opens we've got this base here that keeps it all nice in nice and in its shape and we've got the handle on the side there you're not getting the great view of those i am <laughs> and uh, we've got the teapot here that's got these two little heart tags in it and we've got these tea bags as well that open out to reveal a little writing space so that's really cute. And the tea bags do, do fit inside the cups as well. Uh, 
I love that kind of a uh, little bit of attention to detail and whimsy. Uh, so that's those. This then opens out to reveal um, some more pockets that we can pop things in. Um, I've got a couple of little tags here. You can add some more ephemera in there uh, or indeed some more of the accordion folded pages if you want more writing space. So that's that. And then we can open up this section to reveal the living room side of this boat, little boho houseboat. And we've got this beautiful pop up here with the chest of drawers, the table and the sofa. Oh God, it's so beautiful. I would live there in a flash. And then on the other side, we can do the same. And we've got this pop up of the kitchen area with the kitchen, a chair and the cooker and all the pots and pans and a little dog asleep in his basket over there. Looks really great, works really, really well. So that is that, my dears. I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed the, that video and I hope you love this little creation. Quite a nice display piece. Uh, I think I might keep this one out, actually. It's right up my street. Have a lot of fun and I will see you next time.